Let's have a look here. Brian's provided us with a factorization for this top question. X plus eight, X minus five. Do you agree? Looks good to me, fantastic. So he's factorized first, and then he looks at each of his factors and sees, <clears throat> excuse me, each factor gives him a solution. The X plus eight factor gives him this solution, and the X minus five factor gives him this one. Thumbs up, great job. It's pretty much, it's flawless. Now when we have a look at the second one, remember I said to you, I gave you the clue that you should complete the square here, but for you, what should twig in your mind as you look at a question like this is, I can't think of a pair of numbers that adds to this and multiplies to this. I, I just can't come up with one. It should take you about 10 to 15 seconds to look at that and say, I, I can't think of an answer. And that's fine. That's why we have this new sort of upgraded tool. All right? So you can see, uh, we've done a few things here. Uh, what Arib has done is actually not exactly the way that I suggested you do it yesterday, but it still works perfectly. What he wants is a perfect square that's built out of this, right? So he looks at that plus six and he says, we've got to do two things. Do you remember what the two things were? You halve and then square. You halve and then square. When you halve, you get three. When you square, you get nine. Now, we don't have nine. We have a four. So what Arib has done is added what to both sides? Have a look. He, he's added five to both sides, right? That, that turns his four into a nine, which is exactly what we need. Um, if you had an intervening line before that, that's okay. You should have still ended up with the five on the right-hand side. And once you've got this, that's a square. Remember I said to you before, it doesn't look like a square, but it's an algebraic version of a square. So he's factorized it as a square, he's taken the square root, and then from the second last line to the last line, what has he done? Have a look carefully, what operation has he done? <coughs> he has subtracted three from the left and from the right. Now, Andrew asked a great question earlier, which was, uh, do we just leave it like that? Or do we remember the fact that actually this is shorthand for two numbers, right? Uh, and you might want to, just for the sake of illustration, you might want to write with me, this is short for minus three, minus root five. That's one of the answers. And then the other answer is minus three, plus root five. That's why there's a plus or minus there. So this is actually what we mean. Now, do we have to write this last line? Do we have to write it out as two answers? The short answer is no. The short answer is no. You can leave it here, and that's, that's awesome. It's nice and succinct. You've got all the information that you need. However, Sometimes we do want to write it as two, and I will show you an example. Just put your pens down for a minute and look up. Suppose we went through this process, okay? And on this last line here, instead of getting minus three plus or minus the square root of five, suppose my last line said this. Okay, suppose like the numbers ended up with a 49 underneath the square root. Now, we know what 49 is, it's a special number. It's seven squared. So I actually can take the square root of 49. It gives me this, okay? Now this is still true. This is still two solutions. But because it's not a third anymore, because it's just whole numbers, right? You're like, I, I know what minus three minus seven is. What's minus three minus seven? It's minus 10. And I know what minus three plus seven is as well. It's four. Now clearly, this is better, like it's just, look, there's the two numbers, just like you're used to, okay? So writing it just like this is fine, but in the case where it's like, oh, they're not square roots anymore, I actually can collect like terms, then, then you should, okay? Does that make sense? 